well hello there internet and youtube how are you guys welcome pythonistas wanting to learn about python and web scraping and today's tutorial we are going to talk about how to integrate mysql with python so let's get into it <clears throat> before we start i'd like to thank you all for watching this video coming to my channel and watching this tutorial and if you like the video please subscribe hit the like button or share the content comment if you like and all, remember you can get access to all of the source code for all the video tutorials at this link which is also you'll find in the description that way you can support me and you can play around with the files and get to be more confident with your coding and become a more confident python coder so let's start with the uh, with the tutorial okay um so integrating mysql with python unfortunately python support for mysql is not built in however there are a good number of open source libraries that you can use both for uh, python 2.x and python 3.x that allow you to interact with mysql database one of the most popular of these is uh, py mysql which you can find at the link shown in the foil here so as of the recording this uh, tutorial the current version of py mysql is 0 0.6.7 and can be installed using pip or pip3 if you have python 3 installed uh, my installation works uh, fine with pip install my py mysql so just go ahead and do that in your command line and of course you can also download from its source but i'm not going to show you how how to do that because you have to find your own uh, os uh, version and find out how, what is best suited for you but working from pip it works fine so after installation you should have access to the py mysql package automatically and while your local M mysql server is running you should be able to execute the following script successfully which i'll show you in a second and it's this one and just remember to add the root password here so we import pymysql and define a connection and cursor and we execute this uh, sql statement and we execute then the next x uh, the first one is just to we we say we could use the database that we created in the last video and this we execute a sql command and then we print out what we have uh, fetched from uh, the cursor and then we close the cursor and then we cl close the connection so i'll pause the video and put down in my password and uh, you can update your password and I'll get back to you soon so if I run this uh, script it should be able to get some data the first uh, first that's where we are getting we, we are getting the row where the row ID or where the id is one so there are two types of uh, okay you might be able to see the password it's not a big deal it's just temporary password so so there are two uh, new types of objects that work in this example the connection object and the cursor object uh, the connection cursor model is commonly used in database programming although some users might find it tricky to differentiate the, the two at first the connection is responsible for well connecting to the database of course but also sending the database information handling rollbacks when a query or set of queries need to be aborted and the database needs to be returned to its previous state and creating a new cursor objects as well a connection can have many cursors let me get my faults up so i'm not just talking into the air so a connection um can have many cursors a cursor p 
keeps track of certain state information such as uh, which database it is using if you have multiple databases and need to write information across all of them you might have multiple cursors to handle this a cursor also contains the results of the latest query it has executed by calling functions on the cursor such as cur.fetch1 we can access this information it is important that both the cursor and the connection are closed after you are done using them not doing this might result in connection leaks a buildup of unclosed connections that are no longer being used but the software is unable to close because it's under the impression that you might still use them so this is the sort of thing that brings databases down all the time so remember to close your connections and the most common thing you probably want to do starting out is to be able to store your scraping results in a database so let's take a look at how this could be done using a previous example the wikipedia scraper when we've scraped the kevin bacon links so uh, just have a look at those videos and you can find them in the tutorial in the in the uh, web scraping uh, playlist so dealing with unicode text can be tough when web scraping by default mysql does not handle unicode fortunately you can turn on this feature just keep in mind that doing so will increase the size of your database and because uh, we're bound to run into a variety of colorful characters on wikipedia so now it's a good time to tell your database to expect some unicode and we can do that by So on going to our MySQL command line, just need to change. Okay, let's see. We have the table, so we need to do some altering on the table. Set the UTF and before this should be fine. Okay, and then we need to alter the table. The attributes are same, we just need to 
reset it to UTF uh, M UTF eight. The correct format. I'll explain in a second what, what I'm trying to say. are part of our developers daily routines so what these four lines do is that I they change the following the default character set for the database for the table and for both the two columns from UTF MV4 which is still technically Unicode um, but still with notoriously terrible support for most Unicode characters so it changes this to utf 8 mb 4 unicode underscore ci and we'll know that if you're successful if you try to insert a few umlauts or amandering characters into the title or content field in the database and it success succeeds with no errors so now that our database is prepared to accept a variety of all that wikipedia can throw at it we can run the following code uh, this is a again uh, a combination of a, of a mysql connection uh, here is a, the store function to uh, the database and we had the get links which we had from kevin bacon example which is the same so if you are unsure about this, uh, have a look at the previous video, which explains this code. So, and we put uh, the try, uh, <coughs> we start the get links uh, function from here in the try block. And uh, we close the cursor and connection finally close so I'll just pause and just remember to update your password here and remember you can you can uh, download this file in the link described in the in the description from the code repository so I started to run the code So there are a few things to note here. First, the character the car set UTF-8 uh, is added to the database connection string. This tells the connection that it should send all information to the database as UTF-8. And of course, the database should already be configured to handle this. Second, note the addition of, the, of a store function. This takes in two string variables, title and content, and adds them to an insert statement that is executed by the cursor and then committed by the cursor's connection. This is an excellent example of the separation of the cursor and the connection while the cursor has some st stored information about the database and its, own, and its own context. It needs to operate through the connection in order to send information back to the database and insert some information. Last, you'll see that a finally statement was added to the program's main loop at the bottom of the code. This will ensure that regardless of how the program is interrupted or the exceptions that might be thrown during the, this exec execution. And of course, because the web is messy, you should always assume exception with, with that exceptions will be thrown. The cursor and the connection will both be closed 
immediately before the program ends. So it's a good idea to include try finally statement whenever you are scraping the web and have an open database connection. So ending this video, uh, although PyMySQL is not a huge package, there are a fair number of useful functions that this tutorial simply can accommodate. So check out the documentation of PyMySQL connector for Python. So I'll just stop our um, script. And if you are on Windows and you downloaded the workbench, you can go to uh, your connection. Now I've opened another connection, but you should use the, the default one. So this is what we had in the beginning. And if we select the rows from here, which are nothing, it should be, let me check. I think I wrote the wrote to wrong. Uh, database one second yeah I was um, testing it out earlier with another 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 um, database which was a test database but still I can show you that so here it has collected all all the links so it's collected to this not this because i stopped the script so now we have a way to dump the links or the title and the content of each link into our database and trying to selecting it from here it would be very very messy so i leave it at that so again thank you so much for watching and if you haven't already please do subscribe excuse me and hit the like button if you haven't already and share the comment content comment on the content and remember you can get access and practice to be more confident in python programming or from, uh, you have access to the source code for these exercises on the following link which you'll, you'll also find in the description and that way you can support me, but you also get better at becoming a Python developer. Okay, thank you so much, guys, for watching, and I see, hope to see you in the next video. Bye.